With us today on The Big App Show, uh, an author who uh, I uh, have followed her other work, and I have to say, with her uh, debut novel, which I actually have a question right off the bat, because uh, I read it as The Mockingbirds, but the publisher sent me the new cover, uh, and it's also known as The Rival, so I'm a little confused about this. But Daisy Whitney, welcome. Uh, thank you so much for taking time today. What, what's the deal with the two covers? Thank you, Adam. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, The Mockingbirds is, in fact, my debut novel, and its sequel is The Rivals. Um, and uh, that the cover they sent you, that piece of paper, um, is what's actually going on the cover of The Rivals, which comes out on February 6th. So ah. that's why they're kind of matching. Thematic. Okay. All right. So Alex comes back and everything continues? Is that, is that how it works? Exactly. Exactly. Ah. So, yeah, the, the, the second book, The Rivals, is told as, as she's leading The Mockingbirds and what happens with the first case that she's handling. Oh, okay, all right, so good, because you know sometimes uh, we'll have authors who have like a completely different cover for like the UK and a whole different title. I'm like, wow, that's weird because Mockingbirds makes so much sense for this. Um, and let me say right off the bat, Daisy Whitney, you surprised me with this. You, <laughs> Why do you say that? Well. I mean, I, I know your work. You've done. Uh, you do a lot of uh, new media reporting. You're, a, you know, uh, of this day and age. I would say. You know, you create your own uh, video shows. Uh, I know you have. Uh, this, uh, you had at one point a podcast, and you do. Uh, you know, a lot of different things, uh, particularly surrounding new media and advertising, which is, you know, very interesting. So I've, I've followed you. I've followed your shows, um, and when I first got the book. Um, and, so, and, I, and on this show, we actually we read all the books. That's the only reason to do it is to get free books. Um, and, and I'm like, you know, the first chapter, it's like, okay, this would be kind of like high school girl in trouble, you know, starts off with a bang, literally. And then by chapter four, I'm like, whoa, hold on a second. And then you just suck me in. This is like To Kill a Mockingbird reverse upside down backwards. And you've actually inspired me to go back and, you know, pull my copy of To Kill a Mockingbird. It's really, really good. I liked it a lot. Oh, thank you. That means a lot to me. I really, I, I truly appreciate it. And it is interesting inhabiting these different worlds because, yes, I'm, you know, I, I, we have a studio at our house and I shoot videos on a green screen there covering media and advertising and hot new social media startups and, you know, writing for various online outlets. And then at night or, or when I'm, you know, get a few minutes here and there, I pop into a coffee shop and I'm getting in the world of, you know, a teenage girl or a teenage boy dealing, you know, in the case of these books with, you know, challenging life issues and school. And yeah, it's, a, <laughs> you just sort of have to be able to just flip. I, that, I think that's sort of the key that I've learned is I just have to be able to flip very easily from, you know, these very different worlds, this, you know, very structured, media focused one. And, you know, and then obviously the fictional made up world. Well, um, it's what's surprising about I, mean, I really think you've got an incredible talent because what you, what you put in here, um, I was really prepared to have like a young adult kind of thing. And I've read a lot of them. We've done a lot of those on the show as well. And it's okay. And I grew up with my two sisters and my mom. So, you know, I, I can totally kind of get into it. I have a 21 year old daughter. So at, at, you know, at, the, at the onset, this is like, uh, things dad really doesn't want to know, you know, particularly because Alex, the, uh, protagonist of the novel, you know, she's uh, uh, young, she's at uh, uh, basically at a prep school, I guess, kind of like a, yep. a, a private prep school, and she loses her virginity, but then, wow, man, all of a sudden it's like, maybe it was rape. I'm like, okay, now you've got me. It, it, how did you come up with the idea for this, uh, I don't want to give too much of the book away, but I think it's, it, it's safe to say there's a kind of a student... Um, almost like a secret council called the Mockingbirds. Whenever something happens at this school, they take care of business, as it were. Um, which I, I really like that idea. How did you come up with that? Well, in the first draft, Alex was very much, was very similar. She, you know, she was she was she was telling the story of what happened to her and making a decision whether to press charges or not. Because I always wanted to write a trial type of story. I mean, that's what To Kill a Mockingbird is. This book very much pays homage to that. And, and I sort of love the whole idea of law and order and justice. And in the very first draft, she pressed charges in an above board, school sanctioned, school approved disciplinary system. And it rang so false. I kept thinking, there's no way, there's no way she, there's no way this could happen to a 17 year old, obviously. Like that, the way I originally wrote it was much more, 
true to, to perhaps a college experience. And I, I just knew that it had to be underground in order for it to feel authentic to a high school experience. And as soon as I knew that I had to kind of create this underground system, so that's my cat. Uh oh, hello. <laughs> I'm sure the first person that a cat has ever crept in front of the... <laughs> She's here, she's here to light in the mood. Um, I just knew that it needed to be underground, and I thought, what is the canonical high school story that all high school students read about justice and doing the right thing and to kill a mockingbird? And just kind of, uh, kind of came out of that. There's also there's so many cool references. Um, things that maybe I knew but certainly had forgotten, musical references. Are, are you a musician by any chance? Because there's a lot of uh, good stuff in there regarding music. I have no talent whatsoever um, musically. I wish I could sing. I, I wanted to be a Broadway star. That was my original career goal back when I was younger, and I'm still just a massive, massive musical theater fan. I wish I could be you know, on stage singing and dancing, but now I can't hit a single note. But probably because of that, because I, you know, I, I, I love music and I wish I could do it. That's one of the great things about fiction is that, like, okay, I can kind of become that through this character. So I was able to bring in, even though she's not, even though it's not about Broadway, I was able to bring in that, that love of music and in Alex's case, it's classical music and classical piano, Beethoven, Brahms, and so on. And Liszt. Let's not forget Franz Liszt. Yes, of course not. Obviously. Very important. So how does one go about making this transformation? Uh, because uh, certainly in media in the United States, you're pigeonholed so easily. Um, everyone knows me as the MTV guy. Um, you know, you can never do anything any, anything yeah, different. No, yeah. It's like can never do anything different. You're too you're you're too young to remember me from those days. Um, so when you're doing this new media stuff. Uh, you go to a publisher, uh, it must have been incredibly hard to just get through that initial kind of uh, you know, wall barrier that I would presume was there. Well, I have to say, I, I actually tried, this is my first published novel, I had tried to, uh, to write a nonfiction book, really kind of playing off of my media experience. I had a proposal, it went out to publishers, it was all about internet fame. It was, you know, I was looking at people like, I Justine and Rhett and Link and Gary Vaynerchuk and all of those guys who you know have really had incredible success in our field and nobody bit. We got you know a little bit of interest here and there, but it was interesting because when I tried to do something in publishing that was very directly related to my day job expertise, it didn't happen. And that's not to say it can't happen for somebody else with a better idea, a stronger proposal or whatever. Um, but in my case, when I was writing fiction, it almost, it, it didn't matter what my day job was. The fact that I had 15 years of experience reporting about new media didn't matter at all to Little Brown. All they cared about and all most publishers care about when it comes to a novel is, is the story compelling enough you know, for somebody to take it off the shelves of the bookstore. Right, and and so right off the bat, boom! It's uh, did, how long ago did this come out? This is uh, not too uh, long. The hardcover was published in uh, 2010, and the paperback that you have just came out in late December of 2011. So it's been been on the shelves for about a month or so now, and this, the the sequel, The Rivals, is February 6, 2012. Okay, good. How's how's it doing? Is it is it is it is it selling? Is it uh, working out? Do you even know? Um, I don't know because you see royalty statements so far down the track. I know that, um, I mean, the, the, the hardcover did well. I, I got a lot of accolades. I made a lot of library lists. I was an NPR best teen read. Um, and the paperback has, you know, gotten some really, really nice bookstore placement um, that I've been excited about. So I, I hope, <laughs> hope that's a sign that I'll be able to keep doing this for a while. Oh, absolutely. Well, and, and I'll say again, that this should not be just uh, positioned as, uh, as a young adult novel. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I won't uh, go into kind of how it ends and where it all goes because you, know, you never want to do that with kind of a, a court crime drama. Um, but the whole idea of the Mockingbirds, that idea of a, of a council, does that exist anywhere? Are there schools that actually have that? You know, I haven't come across any, and I think that's probably a good thing because you know the reality is, as I, you know, you're you're a parent, I'm a parent, my kids are eleven and six, um, but we 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 want our kids to come to us if they have problems, right? If something you know if something bad happens to your kid or to uh, to one of their friends or they are going through something challenging in school, you know, you really want them to be able to come to you or to a trusted teacher or or an advisor or whatever it is. And so I haven't really come across anything like this. I have, 
you know, heard sort of bits and pieces and anecdotes, um, you know, from some librarians who've read it who told me about different types of secret societies at the colleges that they went to um, and sort of protests at the secret society stage. So I definitely think there are, you know, kind of little bits and pieces from it. But no, I haven't heard <laughs> of an official underground justice system. Well, I, I like it. I mean, you know, yes, of course you want your kid to come to you. But on the other hand, I'm like, yeah, I kind of like the whole idea of the vigilante justice thing. You know, it, 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 it's like that wouldn't be too bad, I wouldn't think, if, if schools had something like that. That was just my, my feeling. I was really kind of maybe disagreeing with, with you, but agreeing with the basic premise of what's happening in the book. I liked it. I, li I liked that idea. Well, thank you. And I have to say, I'm, I have always been a fan of sort of the superhero genre and the, you know, the Batman idea of vigilante justice. So it was definitely fun to, to be able to play around with like, what does that mean? And what does that mean to teenagers? And what does that mean in this type of, you know, boarding school setting? And really, what does it mean to take matters into your own hand? And when is it okay? And when is it not okay? I mean, those are ideas that, that really fascinate me. Like, can you kind of be a superhero? Not in a cheesy sort of way, but, you know, like kind of doing some of those same edgy, like maybe this is right, maybe this is wrong right. kind of thing. Right. So when does uh, The Rivals come out, which is the follow-up, the sequel? The Rivals officially comes out on February 6, 2012. Oh, okay. So um, I'll have to have you back on really quick then. I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I feel like I've, I've read the wrong book almost. You know, it's like, uh, oh my goodness. But actually, I haven't because I'm set up for it now. This is great. It really is. So um, while you're, you do want to. I mean, it's, it's not really a fair question, but you want to continue writing? Do you want to still do your new media stuff? I mean, can you combine all that? Well, I've definitely sort of found a good balance right now where um, I, I have a good mix of publications that I'm writing for and, you know, the, the online video that I'm still doing, my own new media minute, um, and I, you know, and, and writing. So, you know, so we'll see. I, I got to you know, keep paying the mortgage and all of that. But for now, I'm, I'm definitely enjoying the mix and, and I'm able to find the time to do both. So I'm kind of weirdly, crazily efficient and I'm um, totally addicted to caffeine, so it's working for now. <laughs> <laughs> You're a maniac. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got kids to boot, so that, that must be challenging. Well, you know, life is challenging, right? I just, I just you know, I just gun it all day long. I'm like, I'm just going, I'm just going. <laughs> awesome. See how much I can get done at the end of the day. Awesome. And, and Daisy Whitney really is your true name? It is my true name, yes. <laughs> it's <laughs> great. I mean, two first names. It's great. I like that. The truth is um, I was actually uh, Elizabeth Daisy Whitney. That was on my birth certificate. Funny story. My mom was very much sort of a hippie 70s type of person, and she wanted to name me Daisy. And my father said, well, she needs a real name. So they <laughs> named Elizabeth Daisy Whitney and said she can choose when she's older. But when you've been called Daisy your whole life, and you, you kind of dealt with some of the teasing that comes with a slightly unusual name, mm -hmm. you know, I just said, no, I'm Daisy Whitney. So I got rid of Elizabeth, so I'm just Daisy Whitney. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Daisy Whitney, again, congratulations. Uh, this is a great book, and I'm going to recommend it to a lot of people. Um, and again, thank you because it inspired me to listen to some music I hadn't thought about, like Ode to Joy, um, to, uh, as I said, to, to go get To Kill a Mockingbird, and like, oh, that, that actually was kind of a, a good story. Uh, but this one is also, uh, I'll treasure this one, it's great. And uh, as soon as I uh, get a copy of The Rivals, I'll, uh, I'll have that uh, ready to talk to you about if, uh, if you have some time in the near future. That'd be a lot of fun. Oh, thank you, Adam. I really appreciate it. Anytime. It's my pleasure, and if you guys want a copy of uh, The Mockingbirds, all you have to do is hit the blue button, which is flashing above me. That'll take you right into the Amazon store. You can pick it up from there. Now available in paperback. Daisy Whitney, thanks again so much. Thanks, Adam.